What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk about a very simple question, it should be a short video, and that would be, where should I place my net pots in a hydroponic system? So you can see here I've got some basil cuttings rooting in a mixture of rock wool and hydroton, and I'm going to pop one of those out and we're going to discuss this issue in depth. So stay tuned, pretty simple question, pretty simple answer, but I've gotten so many questions about it, I figured I'd put it on the channel, so stay tuned. For the sake of this video, we're going to look at it in a Kratky system. So if you're unfamiliar with Kratky, I do have a video on it, but this is a simple mason jar, non-recirculating, uh, non-electronic hydroponic system. So all you're doing is you're growing in water and nutrients. There's just water in here right now though. Um, and some sort of soilless growing medium. And here you can see I have a stone wool cube right there. And I also have some expanded clay pellets, which hopefully the light can pick up. Now, the question is always, hey, where do I put my net pot, the bottom of it? Where should the bottom of it be? And the answer is pretty simple. There's two answers for you. The first answer is this. If the roots are out of the net pot, so if this basil cutting has rooted to the point where we're seeing roots hairs pop out of here, well then it doesn't really matter where the net pot is as long as those roots have made it into the nutrient reservoir. And so if that's the case, you don't have to worry about where you place your net pot. As soon as the roots reach that section of the reservoir that has nutrient solution in it, they're getting water, they're getting oxygen, and they're getting nutrition. So you're all good. Now, the question that I think most people mean when they ask, where should my net pots be, is where should they be when the roots have not exited the net pot? And that's a great question. And so that's gonna depend on a couple factors. So the first factor is how moist is this growing media that you're growing in right here? Is it enough to support the root system until it has enough time to grow and drop down into the reservoir? In my case, I'm using a small rock wool cube. That holds a lot of water. Rock wool will retain quite a bit of water. However, you know, basil, from cutting to developing a full root system to dropping into the solution, that might take a little bit too long and I don't want to waste uh, a cutting. I don't wanna have a cutting die on me. If you look closely, you can see root hairs beginning to pop out on this basil right here. And that's a good signal that within this growing medium right here, roots have started to make their way through and will start to pop out. Let's go ahead and take a look at this basil. And it looks like right there at the bottom, if you can just see it, right about there, there's a root hair that started to come out. Uh, that little white root hair right there. And that's a good sign that this basil is about ready to explode and get that root mass down into the growing medium. So with that said, how do we know it's going to support this moisture in the rock wool is going to support that root system until it drops down here? Well, we don't for sure. And so there's two ways that you can counteract this. The first is to top drip into the rock wool until you see the roots start to make their way into the solution. That way you're 100% sure that the rock wool is going to remain moist and give that root system enough water to actually get down here. The second thing that you can do is use an air stone. And so imagine if we're not growing in Kratky and this is a deep water culture system and there's a little air stone down here. That air stone is going to be popping up bubbles, sending bubbles upwards, and then they'll pop at the surface. And when they pop, they're going to shoot little bits of water upwards and they will hit the bottom of the net pot. And depending on what growing media you're using, wicking action is actually going to take that moisture upwards and, and it'll eventually get into the rock wool cube. If you're using all rock wool, and let's say the bottom of the cube is at the bottom of the net pot, that's certainly going to support the root system and you don't need to submerge it and dunk it deeply into the water. You can just let the bubbles popping hit the bottom and then wicking action will take it up and it will feed this root zone until it's ready to drop in. All right, so let's do a quick recap. I've gotten the questions so many times on the podcast, on the YouTube channel, on Facebook, on Instagram, everywhere that I figured I'd answer it. So here we go. If the root system has made it into the nutrient solution, don't really worry about where your net pot is placed, especially if you've got an air stone because you can drown the roots by fully submerging them and that oxygenated water is going to make sure that they get what they need. Now, if the root system has not reached into the nutrient reservoir, well then you have two options. One, you can top drip and make sure that let's say your rock wool cube is going to remain moist and 
give enough water for that plant to develop roots and drop in, or you can use a, an air stone and then use some sort of growing media that has pretty good wicking potential, pretty good moisture retention, and allow the bubbles that pop at the surface of the water to throw water upwards, get absorbed by that growing medium, and then boom, problem solved. So one is a top down problem, literally, and one is a bottom up problem, literally. So pretty interesting. Hopefully that answered the question for you. And you know what? This is a little quick shout out to everyone who has been following the YouTube channel. I'm putting a lot more time into it lately. I'm putting two videos out a week. Maybe I'll go to three, I'm not really sure. Uh, and I definitely wanna know, what do you guys wanna hear about? Do you like more hydroponic stuff? Do you like some of the houseplant stuff I've done? Do you like some of the edible raised bed gardening that I'm doing? Maybe succulents? I've got pretty much everything in the works. I can do videos on all this stuff because I like gardening in general. I like plants in general. Uh, and I'm hoping to make this a channel about people who just are plant lovers. They wanna grow edibles, they wanna grow succulents, they wanna grow houseplants, whatever it might be. Maybe they just wanna do weird basil experiments like this. Uh, so definitely let me know. Drop a comment. I respond to pretty much every comment that's ever been left on my YouTube channel, except for ones that are like intentionally hurtful or mean. There's no point in responding to those. Just let them hate. But anyways, um, definitely hit like and subscribe if that's something that sounds interesting to you. I'm shooting for two to three videos a week, like I said. Uh, and again, shoot me an email, kevin at epicgardening.com, or you can go ahead and check the website out, epicgardening.com. There's a podcast on there. Definitely check it out, um, all, wherever I am, whatever platform you use, I'm on it, Pinterest, whatever. So, uh, you know, it might be a little intense, but what do you like? I like to garden, hopefully you do too. Just a random fellow gardener making mistakes and sharing what I learn. So, until next time, good luck in the garden and keep growing.